Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is kind of like a milestone video. I think this is my 100th video. And I thought, how awesome would it be to introduce a brand new transport that's gonna be coming for mass transit in the near future? I teased it a little bit on Twitter and we talked about it in a bus stop a few months ago. Yeah, it's been a couple months since I've posted, but hey, you know, it's been summer, it's been nice out. It's, you know, it's, I gotta touch grass. So I wanted to talk to you about the SQL database transport that I put together. Now, right now it's supporting Postgres. The goal is to support SQL Server as well. But the intent is to make a transport available that doesn't require you to go and add like RabbitMQ or Azure Service Bus, but lets you add message-based patterns like all of the capabilities of mass transit that it puts on top of a transport give you that in your application that's already using a SQL database. So whether you're using Postgres or SQL Server eventually, the plan is to make it so that you can add all of the great features of mass transit, consumers, sagas, routing slips, the outbox, all of the cool stuff that mass transit has, use that without having to bring in a broker. And I don't think of this as like a test transport. I'm, I'm building this as something that could be production ready that you could use and do asynchronous processing, job consumers, batch processing, all of the kind of things that you want to do. It's a full-fledged broker-based transport. So I've posted some initial documentation up on the documentation site under Transport SQL, and it kind of covers some of the basics, some of the details that it has. It is a true message broker design. So it stores messages, queues, topic subscriptions, everything. It locks messages, it does lock renewals, it does redeliveries, it does all of the things that you would get from like an Amazon SQS or Azure Service Bus. It supports scale out across multiple consumer instances. So if you scale up your Kubernetes cluster and are pointing at the same Postgres database, you'll pull all of those messages in a load balanced manner. Um, it uses, at least with Postgres, it uses listen notify. So you get like immediate message delivery. You're not waiting for that next polling interval. And I'm gonna to try to find some ways to do that with SQL Server, but frankly, it just doesn't do it. And Service Broker is not an option. So um, it is written to pure SQL, so it does not require Entity Framework. It does not require any additional packages. I do use some bits of Dapper, but when I say bits of Dapper, I mean I've ingested them into the code base so that you don't even have to mess with them and it won't mess with your Dapper. But I'm doing pretty simple queries here, so it's fairly basic stuff. Um, Feature-wise, it is full-featured. It has durable message support. Messages are stored as JSON in the database. And with Postgres, that's a JSONB column. So all of that stuff is usable for other things down the road as I add some new capabilities. Uh, it does support full polymorphic uh, pub sub. So you can, just like with RabbitMQ, you can publish a message type. You can consume a inherited type of that and any of those capabilities all there. I've also kind of copied the RabbitMQ features and made it so I have multiple subscription types. I've got fan out, routing key, which is kind of like the direct exchange in Rabbit. I've got pattern base, which is like the topic exchange in Rabbit. So you can do all sorts of cool things with that. And I've documented some of that down here. Message scheduling, no need to dig quartz out because I have full message scheduling in the box, including cancellation of scheduled messages, which previously was only available with quartz, hang fire. And occasionally it worked with Azure Service Bus, but it was kind of weird. Uh, second level retry and delayed abandon is all built in. Priority based queues, messages have a priority. You can set it lower to get them to move faster. And by lower, I mean a lower number. So, and again, everything that Mass Transit has in it is supported, all the different consumer types. Um, this is just some talking about like the routing key based and pattern based subscriptions. Anyway, the docs are up there. The schedule is super easy to set up. Let's jump into a sample that I put together that is available on GitHub today. So this sample is a version of the demo registration uh, sample that I used. So when I did my routing slip series, I used this and I just ported it over because honestly it used everything and I wanted something that used everything because the best way to find out what you didn't get finished is to try to use it. So the only difference really here, uh, you can see I'm configuring all the different Saga repositories. In this case, I am using Entity Framework as my Saga repository with Postgres. Um, I am using the Entity Framework Outbox. So I am using the Outbox with this transport so that I get that uh, exactly once delivery of outbound messages. And I'm configuring everything on my endpoints here. So my use delayed redelivery, which is natively supported by the transport. I'm, that's that second level retry. Use message retry for those immediate transient exceptions. 
And then I'm using the Entity Framework out box. So I want to make sure that any sort of weirdness or any sort of delays, I'm doing that exactly once processing with my consumers. Configuration-wise, just like you do with the other brokers, we've got using DB, using PGSQL. Uh, I'm pulling the configuration straight from the container because I'm using an options type to configure the, uh, the connections and everything. So no need to, you could just as easily specify a full connection string here. Um, I'm also specifying use the DB message scheduler. Because I'm doing request response, I want to auto start that bus endpoint. And then I just call configure endpoint. Honestly, that's about it. I mean, I got a bunch of other crazy options here for like the host startup and tear down. That's just good behavior. I've got some swagger, you know, because you got to have swagger. And then I've also got um, some health check endpoints. So nothing super crazy there. Uh, reference wise, I'm just referencing those packages. I'm using Serilog for logging. So let's fire it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I think it's running. Yeah, so let's go, we'll start it up. We'll see it kind of start up here. See it run. There we got our Swagger. We're not gonna mess with Swagger. We're jumping over to Postman. We're gonna hit this with a registration. We're gonna tag it. We're gonna get our status. We are probably already registered. Yeah. So if I go and look at the log for that, you can see that everything that happened in here, I created all my queues, my topology, set it up in, in the, the broker, which the broker is running on Postgres. You can see that DB local host for all the different routing slip activities, the bus endpoint, auto delete after five minutes, all that stuff is there. Uh, what else have I got here? I've got my queue subscriptions. How do I know I have my queue subscriptions? Let's go take a look. I mean, it's SQL after all. There's all my queue subscriptions. I've got a submit registration. I've got uh, events coming out of my routing slip. All of these are subscription types, all AKA fan out. And these ones are all going to the registration state queue. These are going to submit registration. Do I have any messages in the queue? Nope, queues are empty right now because it's SQL. You can manage it with tools you already have. Um, but you can see I've got my sends, uh, my receives, I'm processing the saga. You can see the outbox is delivering, doing everything that it's supposed to do. I have full debug logging on so that you can kind of see what's happening. Um, you know, the outbox processing and the different process registration. Every endpoint has the outbox on it. So, I mean, this is worst case performance of just running this through here. So this is my request response, uh, getting the uh, registration status that's being handled by the saga. The uh, Response is then being sent out. There was no messages produced there because response is actually skipped the out. No, it actually did deliver through the outbox. How hilarious is that? That's fun. Um, so yeah, and you, we, we have all of our retry stuff. So if I go back to the registration, let me give it a 187, which is the secret code for uh, you're not gonna make it. So it's gonna retry. You can see I'm still received, but I haven't processed it yet. If I actually go out and look, I can see that I have a message pending redelivery. It was last delivered at this time. It's been delivered once and it's getting ready to be redelivered. So we've got a scheduled redelivery. It's going to be processed. So again, I can look at the message in the queue. Eventually it's going to, let's see if we got the body here. Where's the body? The body should be in here somewhere. Oh, look, there's the body. I think if I do the little view. No, nope, not that way. Anyway, yeah, body's JSON. It's raw JSON because there's no reason to store the message envelope. We've got the, uh, We've got the, all the headers in the database transport tables themselves, so we have the full routing slip. And if you've never seen a routing slip, well, welcome to what a routing slip looks like. We even have the subscriptions in there for the different events that are produced by that. So pretty cool stuff. History log, compensation logs for the, that. All that stuff is in there. Because we can look at it. We can just query it. It's in the database. Everything's processed by now, so that message should be gone. Yep, message is now gone. Nothing to see there. If I go back here and I check the status of this again, I can see that I am now registered because that failure in that second level retry has finished processing. And we can see that up here as well. We can see that we got that initial area saying the paper provider wasn't responding. You know, so we kicked it out. We said we're gonna do a retry, then what was it? Uh, yeah, so we did a resend, which is actually logged to say, hey, resend me this in, I'm gonna guess probably four seconds, maybe? Nope, 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 resend 50. So we're probably gonna go all the way up to, here somewhere. Yeah, anyway, we delayed it. So then we processed the payment again. We executed the activity. You can see that then the saga and everything did its thing because the consumer is smart enough to know that, you know, when we try the second time, the payment provider is going to work. That's all those demo capability. So yeah, it's totally working. I mean, it's, it's probably got some rough edges, but 
for the most part. Uh, the serialization works, the outbox works, scheduling works, unscheduling works, sagas work. All the things that I would expect a transport to do, do. In fact, I've taken samples that worked on other transports and just ported them over, such as this one. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, the sample is up on GitHub, sample DB transport. Um, it has all of the bits you need it. You will, it does. So the database transport packages are not on NuGet. They are available separately by a private NuGet fee. Um, and as it kind of says up here, the database transport, it's under active development. It's under a, available for a limited previews only. So customers of Mass Transit who are interested in getting an early access release to the preview can contact support to get the details and get um, access to that. Um, but yeah, still a little bit of work to do, and I've still got to write the SQL Server queries and topology. Uh, we can see, you know, it always does, you know, it creates its own schema within the database. In fact, it'll create the entire database. If I go in here and nuke this, and then I just go in here and say, yeah, let's just drop this database. Because why not? And because, you know, let's do it with force. Okay, so we just nuke that database. It's gone. I come in here and I run this from scratch, it will come up, it will apply the migrations, it will create all the tables. And now if I go back in here and I do a refresh, oh look, there's my sample database. There's my sample, there's my tables, there's my transport, there's my tables. Everything is back. So it's real easy and that's really nice for unit tests is just to be able to say, hey, give me something fresh, I want it to work. I can see that, you know, the queue topology has already been set back up. Might be in a different order this time, but it doesn't matter because it's all just eventually there. It does full pub sub. I mean, everything is handled through um, Postgres functions, so super fast. I did some initial benchmarking on it uh, on my machine, which is a Mac Pro, although it's an old one, so it's not nearly as fast as the cool new hotness. Um, but it is still Intel, so it runs a lot more stuff. Um, I'm getting roughly, you know, maybe a thousand messages a second published. I mean, I haven't really pushed it or anything, but, you know, and that's just running Postgres in a little Docker container. So I'm going to test it with RDS and see how it does in Amazon. Uh, and I'll test it with Azure Postgres too, just to kind of see what it gets within the same data center. But for most business applications, for most, you know, targeted use case for this, a thousand messages a second is perfect. I mean, I can't think of anything better. So. So that's where we're at. Hopefully this has been informative. I know I sneaked a peek on Twitter last night of some of the logs, but this should give you a little bit more detail. Uh, if you are interested, definitely reach out. Um, it's going to be a pretty exciting offering to have available. And in the meantime, if you uh, are using Mass Transit at your company and are looking to get support and support the project, reach out via that support link and uh, we can talk about the support contracts that are available. So. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. I'm out.